Call them in order and call them Councilor Brown, Louise, and the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. 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 Thank you.
uh, to approve resolution 18-0723. Is there any discussion? Hearing none, Councilor Brown? Yes. Councilor Weaver? Yes. Councilor Broughton? Yes. Councilor Watson? Yes. Motion carries and the resolution uh, to approve Goodwin Mills K. Wood uh, engineering agreement uh, for the sidewalk extension is approved. Next item is a John L. Fisher Community Center Youth Horse Riding Lessons Administration Agreement, resolution number 18-0723-1. Motion to approve resolution number 18-0723-1. Second. Motion by Councilor Brown, second by Councilor Broughton to approve resolution number 18-0723-1. Is there any discussion? Hearing none, Councilor Brown? Yes. Councilor Weaver? Yes. Councilor Brawl? Yes. Councilor Watson? Yes. Motion carries and the resolution to approve an agreement with John L. Fisher Community Center Board uh, to administer youth horse riding lessons is approved. Next item is an architectural services agreement um, to inspect and do structural engineer and so forth on commercial and residential buildings downtown resolution 18-0723-2. Motion to approve 18-0723-2. Second. Motion by Councilor Brown, second by Councilor Weaver. Uh, to approve resolution 18-0723-2. Uh, is there any discussion? Hearing none, Councilor Brown? Yes. Councilor Weaver? Yes. Councilor Brown? Yes. Councilor Watson? Yes. Motion carries and the um, resolution authorizing the mayor to sign an architectural and engineering agreement um, for evaluation of downtown buildings is approved. Next one to call on the Chamber of Commerce and our, their president, Linda Williamson. Uh, the Chamber is probably the, one of the hardest working organizations I know in Bruton. And uh, I asked Linda if she would just come and give us a, a brief overview of what all they've got planned for the coming year. And if she could keep it within two hours, that would be fine. <laughs> I think it may be hard. <laughs> um, I've got a short video for you to see of the events that has taken place over the last 12 months. Um, we're going to start with our Porch Fest, which was the first Porch Fest last year in September. We're looking forward to it again this year. Um, it will be on Saturday, September the 15th. Um, we have made some changes. Um, we've kind of condensed it down to we're going to have the same amount of porches, but we're going to um, do it on the 600 block of Belleville and the 600 block of Evergreen. So it's going to be more in one square area, block area. Um, we will still have the main stage at the Downing Home again. Um, they have, um, the current owner has allowed us to have the main stage there again. We will have a group called Sweet Tea Trio. Um, it's three young girls from Alabama that are up and coming in the country music industry right now so we're looking forward to having them there. Um, we're hoping to, uh, we've got a adventure this Wednesday afternoon to look at some other things for that. Then we have our rodeo coming up which this year we're adding Thursday evening um, thanks to the city of Bruton for our the arena that allows us to add another night of events. Um, it will be Thursday <laughs> Yes, Thursday, October the 11th, Friday the 12th, and Saturday the 13th. We'll have the Junior Rodeo on Saturday and Sunday, along with some other events that the 4-H program is going to be putting on Saturday morning. Um, as you can see, we have a large turnout for this. It's also the weekend of T.R. Miller's homecoming, so we're hoping some out-of-town people who have not been in Bruton for a while could come out and see what we're doing in Bruton. This will be, um, this was our holiday kickoff that we do in November. Um, this allows the downtown merchants and different um, businesses in town to open up extended hours to kind of jumpstart the Christmas shopping. Um, 
we have the Choo Choo Market that the vendors are open down there. Um, we, the park is decorated beautifully by the city of Bruton. We appreciate that. That kind of gets everybody into the Christmas spirit. Um, this year we are wanting to do some things to maybe expand on that along with our Christmas parade. Um, we do have a nighttime Christmas parade now. It's been going on for the last several years. Um, this past year, of course, we had to change it from Friday night to Saturday night, but just, I was telling Steve, we, the float came through. I'm sure you, the city councilman said when that snow machine was going, it was like, man, we're in New York City or something. <laughs> But I think everyone really enjoyed it. They, we enjoyed the nighttime parade. Again, we want to, um, we're working on some things to enhance people and some added activities down there that evening um, so that we can just make a nighttime event of that. We were fortunate it was snowing that night. I know it, I know. Yeah. How many times do you get a Christmas parade with snow? Which we did have snow, I think that's why we had to cancel it, was We had the real thing. Um, this was our chamber banquet in March. Um, we always look forward to having the chamber banquet. It gives us the opportunity um, to have the different businesses and uh, business people of Bruton to come out. Um, and we get to, every year, we get the honor of, um, or the pleasure of honoring two high school students, um, from one from W.S. Neal and one from Tierra Miller High School, in honor of um, Coach Roch and Philip Ellis. Um, this year, we had the pleasure of recognizing the Cotton family for Coach Cotton's accomplishments and his dedication to the city of Bruton. Um, then we also get to recognize one of our citizens. This year, it was Joey Shale, well-deserved young man that has put lots of time not only into the East Bruton area but also to the Bruton area. Then we have Kick It at the Creek. As you know this year um, on we usually have it on Saturday evening. This year we had to change, to change it to Sunday afternoon because of inclement weather and it turned out wonderful. We had probably the largest crowd we had ever had at Kick It at the Creek. Um, it gave people the opportunity because Saturdays get you know in the springtime you've got football I mean um, baseball and various things going on so as a chamber we have voted to do it uh, this coming year on a Sunday afternoon to see if it's as successful this year as it was this past year but uh, we sell 1500 pounds of crawfish um, then we also had um, this since the Choo Choo market was not able to um, on Saturday that came over on Sunday so I'm hoping we'll be able to do that again this year I think the people like the opportunity to walk the park and have other things to do besides just listen to the music and stuff and of course we always have something for the children um, we have live music um, we had um, Connie was able to um, have her food truck that she had for Saturday come over that was a big hit because not everyone eats crawfish so there was something else for them to be able to um, enjoy the afternoon in the park. And then of course the Blueberry Festival. <laughs> that used to be one of our biggest events but I think the rodeo is now taking um, first place on that. But um, for the last two years of course we've had to fight the rain and stuff but we've still had an excellent turnout for the Blueberry Festival. Um, the Blueberry Ice Cream, the Cobbler, um, crunch and everything has always been a big hit, big hit again this year. Um, we had more vendors this year, even though some uh, we had to move them around because of the um, condition of the park to try to preserve the park. But we really enjoyed the choo-choo train for it um, being over at the park, the kids and adults alike. Um, so that is, I think that's a very good investment for the city of Bruton uh, and can be used at so many different activities. I don't know if any of you had the opportunity to walk over to the antique car show, but if you had the opportunity to stand back where we had the food court and look at the car show, it was a beautiful picture with all those antique cars in front of the mural. Um, I'm sure we were gonna see that on some postcards and some various things because it was a beautiful scenery for Bruton, Alabama. We do have another event coming up 
it's going to be dog days of summer that this um, Chamber of Commerce is going to help host with um, Paul's Cross. It's going to be Saturday, August the 4th from 9 to 12 at Gordy Dog Park. There will be, I have to keep a <laughs> um, a bark and butt washing station <laughs> with a donation to the Paul's Cross along with um, a best dressed pup contest and a master and dog look-alike contest. Um, we're looking forward to this. I think it's going to be something that um, a lots of people in Bruton um, will come out with their pets and enjoy. Um, I understand that the mayor will be hosting um, the washing station so everyone can bring <laughs> their dog. Um, there will be free hot dogs and drinks, and there will also be adopt pets, adoptable pets on site. So um, we hope everyone can come out and enjoy that. And on behalf of the chamber, I just want to extend a thank you to the city and to the councilman, the mayor. Um, first of all, of course, for the arena. I think that's going to not only help us, but has brought in some other things for the city of Bruton and all the help and support that each one of you give. We've really enjoyed um, being able to utilize Steve. Um, it really helps us on our website and get the information on our events out. And um, we could not do it without everyone helping. So we appreciate it. Thank you. Any questions? Uh, good, good presentation. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you, man. did a great deal. I want to um, talk about Connie Bag a little bit. <laughs> Connie just got a statewide award, and I want to read about that award first and recognize her for it. The A Star Awards recognize individuals who have performed above and beyond the call of duty and embody the principles of the ACE program, a comprehensive development program designed to assist Alabama's smaller communities in their efforts to plan, grow, and prosper. The program is administered through the University of Alabama Center for Economic Development. Each year at the annual meeting, awards are presented to one outstanding mayor, a volunteer, and a local <coughs> ACE coordinator. Alabama Communities of Excellence is an elite group of some 40 cities in the state who have achieved success in the program's stringent criteria. ACE requires cities to show positive growth through attention of planning, education, quality of life, and very, various other specific areas. Each year, the organization gives awards for those who exemplify their highest ideal. Bruton has been fortunate to have someone in that winner's circle for the last three years, with our mayor taking honors one year, the Reverend Willie Blue receiving the honors for Volunteer of the Year. And this year, our ACE coordinator, Connie Baggett, was recognized for her hard work. Connie, I'd like you to stand and pull <laughs> Thank you. Are there any other comments or announcements? I have none. Most of the journey.